Let's take a look at creating a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. We'll look at five quick lessons, including entering information, formatting the spreadsheet, adding formulas, print basics, and a quick easy chart. Let's start by entering information into the spreadsheet. Click in cell A1 and type the spreadsheet title, Mighty Mites Clothing. After the information is entered, press the Enter key on the keyboard. That'll take you to cell A2, and we can enter the spreadsheet subtitle, Fourth Quarter Sales. A3 is going to be empty, so I can click in cell A4 and enter what it is I'll be tracking. We'll be tracking sales, so we'll start with in-store sales, wholesale, web, and other retail. We're going to be adding a spreadsheet total. We'll type in that label and a few other formulas as well. We'll want to know the average, the high sale, as well as the low sale. That completes column A. We're going to start in column B by clicking in cell B3 and enter our label, Holbrook, press the Enter key, and starting in cell B4, we'll be entering some numbers. The thing you want to remember about entering numbers in Excel is that you only need to enter the core number, the decimal point, and the decimal places. We'll add all of the dollar signs, the commas, and some other formatting um, a little bit later on. So we can go ahead and start entering our numbers. And as we said, just type in the point and the decimal places, press the Enter key like we did earlier. Excel will appear to round those numbers, but not to worry. With the formatting, we'll get them to look more consistent. Our job right now is just to enter those numbers. So we'll go ahead and do that in each of the cells in column B. Okay, a little problem that's come up at this point is that column A just doesn't seem wide enough uh, for what's inside of it. So the entries in column B are blocking them to some extent. This is a very common problem in Excel and a quick way to fix it is in the top of the column. So right between that A button and that B button, if I bring my mouse pointer there and double click, it will resize that column so it's wide enough. And we'll continually have to do that um, throughout our exercise. Let's move on to column C. Again, just entering the information, the numbers next, just the number itself, the decimal point, and the decimal places. Pressing the Enter key between. And let's speed things up a little bit. We have the problem once again where our columns are not wide enough. So I'm going to resize column D. Once again, between column D and column E, I'm double clicking. And then again, between column E and column F. It's important that you're in the gray area at the top there. Our next step is formatting. Let's start by making the spreadsheet title, Mighty Mites Clothing, more pronounced and centered across our columns. Let's click and drag to highlight the title and the cells that we want to center it across. And we'll use the merge and center icon on the home tab of the ribbon. Sticking with the title, let's change the font. The font size. We'll make it bold. 
we'll fill in the background color and we'll change the font color. Now we can quickly copy those formats to the subtitle by clicking the Format Painter icon and then clicking the subtitle in cell A2. One minor adjustment, let's make that text a little bit smaller. And we'll move on to the next row. Selecting cells A3 through F3, let's change the alignment of those cells to be right aligned. So in the alignment group, you can click align right. And a few more adjustments as well. We'll make them bold, italic, and we are going to put a border along the bottom. The border button, as we click it, will give us all kinds of options. We're going to choose the one all the way at the top, which ironically is the bottom border. Next, we're going to start by formatting those numbers selecting the numbers in row 4, and in the number group of the ribbon, click the dollar sign icon. The rest of the numbers we're going to select, and just for a little variety, use the comma icon in the number group. We have a little bit more formatting to do, but we're noticing that the information um, is sort of bunched together, so we'd like to add a little bit of a blank row for spacing between the total and the average. So we're going to be able to insert a blank row by right-clicking the number 9 button to the left of the ninth row. And from that shortcut menu, we'll choose Insert. That will give us the blank row that will help us space this out a little bit. Okay, let's continue with our formatting. We are going to be filling in um, the background color of the total row. So I'll go ahead and use that paint can icon for the fill color. And the same thing with cells F3 through F7. Selecting them and using the paint can icon. Mm -hmm. A little bit further down, um, we can select cell A8 and just make it italic, and cells A10 through A12 and make them italic as well. Now we're up to the phase of our project where we add the formulas. We're going to be adding a total row in row 8 and a total column in column F. Totals are something that we commonly need in our spreadsheets and there's a nice shortcut that we can use to get them entered and the quickest way possible we're going to show you that you can actually add the formulas to that total row and that total column at the same time. It just takes um, a moment to select the cells that you'd like to add up and the blank row and blank column where you want those totals to display. Once that's done, it's just a matter of clicking the Auto Sum button up on the Home tab of the ribbon. And while this may look like it went awry, it actually didn't. It once again just means that we need to resize our columns. Since I have multiple columns to resize, I'm going to do them all at once. And I can do that by selecting those columns, clicking and dragging along the column letters to get them all selected, and then double clicking between any two column letters right on that wall. That will resize them all simultaneously. Now that that's done, we can actually see the totals that have been added. So let's look at row 8 first. As I click in cell B8, I can see the total. And if I look at the formula bar at the top of those row buttons, I'm able to see that the auto sum function was able to write the formula equal sum open parentheses B4 colon B7. And what that is doing is performing the sum calculation on these cells before B5, B6, and B7. The auto sum function did the same thing all across row 8, adjusting for the column. 
And similarly in column F as well, um, it now did the calculation across the rows. So as I click in cell F4 and look at the formula bar, I'll be able to see that it is adding up the numbers in cell B4, C4, D4, and E4. The primary reason Excel does this is so that if those numbers change, for example, I'm going to take B4 and type in a zero, what ends up happening is the totals that, um, that are using that particular cell, any cell, any formula that's using that particular value is going to update automatically. Okay, I'm just going to do an undo to get that number back where it belongs. We are going to do a little bit of formatting here. One of the common things we see um, in our total rows is to have a nice top and double bottom border. So we can select those cells. Going back to that border button, we used it earlier. Just working a little bit further down, the option that we want is called top and double bottom border. So I'll give that a click. And as I click off, we'll see that border has been applied. A few more calculations to do. Let's look at calculating an average. In this case, uh, we can use the auto sum button, but it might not be as quick and easy as the auto sum option itself for a number of reasons. So uh, let's see how we can make that work for us. In this case, we're going to click in the cell that we want the answer to go into. So I want the average for the Holbrook sales to go into cell B10. Then I'm going to use the down arrow on the right side of the auto sum button and choose average. Next, I click and drag to select the cells that I wanted to perform the average calculation on. That's B4, B5, B6, and B7. To finish this off, I press the enter key on my keyboard and I have my average calculation. We're going to continue on similarly by calculating the highest sale in that group using a function called the max. So I'm in cell B11. I'm going to use the down arrow on the right side of the auto sum and I'm going to choose max. I click and drag to select the cells to perform that max function on and then I press the enter key. Finally, let's calculate the lowest value. We can use the min function to do that. We'll find that, uh, again, just clicking in the cell I want the answer to go into, so that's B12, using the down arrow on the right side of auto sum to choose the min function, and then clicking and dragging to select the same range of cells we've been using all along, B4 through B7. Finish that off with the enter key. Now, since we need that set of calculations for the rest of the towns, I'm going to copy the formulas. So to copy the formulas, we select the three cells containing the original formulas, and then we aim for the, um, for the autofill, uh, the fill handle, I should say, in the bottom right corner of that group of selected cells. It looks like a little green box, and as I hover right over it, I can click and drag, and what it will do now that I'm over in column E, I'm going to let go, what it did was copy the formula. So the original formulas had to do, as you remember, with the cells in column B. Now when I copied it over um, to the Holtzfeld column, it adjusted the cell reference inside to column C and column D and column E as well. So a quick effective way to be able to copy your formulas is to select the cells and drag by the fill handle. Now let's take a quick look at setting the spreadsheet up to be printed. You'll begin this by going into the File tab and clicking on Print. Taking a look at the print preview, everything looks in order. A lot of times, if you have multiple columns, you may need to change the orientation or adjust other settings as well. Those can, for the most part, be found along the buttons here. So let's say, for example, you had too many columns, couldn't see them all. One thing you can try would be to change the orientation from portrait to landscape. That usually makes it possible for you to fit more columns on your page. We didn't have that problem, but it's good to see this in this format. I'll switch this back. 
and then of course you can print your spreadsheet. I'm going to use the back button. The last step is to produce a chart to graphically represent some of our information. We can do this very quickly and very easily by selecting the cells and using the F11 function key along the top of your keyboard. So the chart is dynamically linked to the information on sheet one. As that information changes, so will your chart. And that concludes our program for today. Thanks for attending and hope to see you again soon.